Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're looking at three situations in which you must use paths in Photoshop. Now a lot of people get confused these days with Photoshop and try and bend paths to their will. In actual fact, for most situations, you're better using shapes than you are using paths. Shapes seem to just work a whole lot better. But there are some scenarios in which you will want to use paths and I'm going to look at three of them here in this video. And the first one involves being able to stroke things. So I'm going to select a ellipse here and I'm set to shape at the moment, but I'm going to drop it down and set it to path. And I'm going to just drag out a circular shape. Now, if I add the shift key, of course, it's going to be a perfect circle. Let me open up the layers panel. You can see that we're working on the background layer right now. Now I can go, and this is one of the instances that you will need to use paths in Photoshop, is to be able to stroke a path. So I'm going to the brush tool here. I'm just going to check and see which brush I have. Well, it's one of Kyle's bonus chunky charcoal brushes. And it's going to paint a sort of interesting line in the document. Now at this point you want to enlarge it or shrink it until you get it approximately the size that you want. I'm just painting into the document and then pressing Control or Command Z to undo. Now that I've got my brush selected and I've got the color I want to paint in selected, so let's just go and get a different color, I'm going to the Paths palette. And down here at the bottom, you can see I've got two options. And one of them is to fill the path with the current foreground color. The other one is to stroke the path with a brush. Because I have my brush selected, when I click on this, I'm stroking the path with that brush. Now, if you set up your brush to do other things such as to have a fade on it, then you're going to get a fade when you actually stroke your shape. So let's just go and let's adjust this brush so it has a fade on it. So here in Size Jitter, I'm setting the control to fade. You can see it's got a very short fade on it right now. Now it's got a longer fade. Let's go back and again in the Paths palette, let's go and apply this option of Stroke Path with Brush. You can see that we're getting a partial fade of the brush around this shape. So you can't do that any other way. The only way that you can stroke a path with a brush is for it to actually be a path in Photoshop. So that's one out of my three scenarios. Here is the second scenario. Here I have an image and in this image, I want to be able to add a mask and you can add pixel-based masks, which is going to be the one that you're going to be most familiar with, but you can also create vector masks. So for this, I'm actually going to choose a custom shape. So I'm going to the custom shape tool. I'm making sure that here I have path selected. Again, that's critical. It doesn't work if you've got a shape, for example. I have a sort of cute heart here that I'm going to use. I've got my layer selected. I'm going to just drag out my heart shape. Now this is a path. With the path selected, I'm going back to my layers palette. So let's just go and get my layer again. And I'm going to control click or command click on a Mac on the mask icon here. What that does is it adds what's called a vector mask. It's not a pixel based mask. It's a vector mask, which means that our standard vector tools are going to work here. So I'm just dragging the path around here. You can see that's dragging perfectly. If I go to the direct selection tool, I can select on an anchor point and I can adjust it. I'm going to turn my live shape into a regular shape by doing that, but it is perfectly possible to adjust your path here by just dragging on the anchor point. So this is a vector shape. You can only use vector shapes when you're creating a vector mask. A shape doesn't work in this instance, but it does give you other options for creating masks in Photoshop. And the final example here is embedding a clipping mask inside a file. So here I have a car with a clipping mask. So this is just a standard JPEG image. It looks like any other JPEG image. It's got a background layer here. But if I go to the Paths panel, you'll see that there's actually a path embedded inside this JPEG image. And this path is the shape of the car. So I could use this path, for example, as a vector mask. So I've got my path selected. 
let's control click on the mask thumbnail and you can see that automatically the mask is applied to this image. Now a lot of stock images will actually come with paths embedded in them. You need to just go to the paths panel and see if somebody has already done the work of clipping out the subject of the image all ready for you to use. So I've obviously got two choices here with this image. I can use the original image with its background, but I can also come in here and use the path to make a vector mask that then allows me to isolate this car in a single click without having to draw out this selection myself. Of course, that presupposes that you have a file with a selection in it. If you don't, what you would do is just go to the pen tool and make your path. So make sure it's set to path and draw a path around your shape. And then if you've got the path in the paths panel, just name it something like car or whatever the subject is so that you're naming the path rather than leaving it as a work path. And then you can save the JPEG image and inside that image will be that path and it'll be accessible for you to use at any time time. Other things that you might think of as necessitating a vector shape simply are not the case. So for example, you can put text on a path. If you have a shape that is a shape rather than a path, you can put text over the edge of the shape. So let's just go and have a look here. I'm going to this time make a shape. So I'll go to the ellipse tool, make sure I'm set this as a shape. If I draw out a circular shape here, I can go to the type tool and you can see that as I click over the edge of the shape, I'm getting the standard type tools available to me. So you can put type over the edge of a shape. You don't need to have a vector path to do that. So just being aware of the times that you absolutely need to use paths and they're severely limited these days. Most of the things that you want to do with things in Photoshop can be done with shapes and shapes are just so much better behaved. They're so much easier to use that I highly recommend that you use shapes wherever possible. If you have some other situations in which you use paths rather than shapes, tell me about them in the comments below so that we can all learn from your expertise as well. If you like carefully researched content like this, clearly presented in a step-by-step -step format so that you can get great results, then you'll love my Skillshare content. I'm a Skillshare top teacher. I have hundreds of short courses on Skillshare that you can access along with thousands of other great courses, all for the price of a single subscription. If you're interested, there's a Skillshare coupon for you in the description below to use to sign up. Using this coupon benefits me as a creator and it helps me continue to make free content available here for you also on YouTube. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. On the screen now, you'll see a video that I've handpicked for you. If you enjoyed the video you've just watched, I know that you're going to really enjoy the one I've picked for you to watch next.